see that candle in the windy? Now that's a signal. That means Mrs. Bourne's expecting the outlaws. She'll have that supper waiting. <laughs> signal my foot. And what's biting you, apart from the usual fleas and ticks? Hmm. Mr. Hare. Jared here is courting Joe Byrne's sister. Now, if that candle is a signal, it'll be for Romeo here. I tell you, we're wasting our time. Let's not be too hasty, Mr. Ward. We may be on the verge of capturing the Kelly gang. I believe that chance is worth a little patience. Well, it doesn't look as if they're coming tonight. Well, that makes it all the more certain they'll be here tomorrow night. Stay here. This is what you must do. Hide a party of men up in the ranges. By day, you sleep like possums. Then at night, I'll lead you down here to keep watch. He swore we'd nailed the Kellys last night, and now he wants us to take up residence. Well, suit yourself. Do you want us to catch him or don't you? There's a place where a party of men might remain unseen. Mr. Here, I've got the very spot. I tell you, the Kelly gang's as good as caught. We're coming up in a world worth 2,000 pounds a head. I reckon I might cash myself in. <laughs> <laughs> I could have got a dozen of them. They're nailed up everywhere. In the papers, too. All this money on us. Soldiers guarding banks. They're making it hard to do another holder. I don't think we'll be sticking up any more banks. Well, what are we going to do, then? Nothing they expect. Danny, uh, what else has the Astonisher got to say? A oh, decent write-up about the sympathizers. Mr. Bowman said it was a monstrous thing to keep the men incarcerated without one tittle of evidence brought against them. It would be one of the greatest crimes known against English liberty if they were kept longer. Mr. Bowman had a lot to say when he was defending Yamara. No paper was interested then. Uh, look, they could ignore a woman with a baby, not 15 innocent men. It's coming. Sure as a rain after the drought of a dry season. All those decent people who read that paper with no love for us. They have to see that men of power are using the law to defeat justice. I reckon you might have something there. Even me saintly mother sees me in a different light these days. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I might go over and see the old lady tonight. There won't be time to let Aaron know you're coming. Then they'll both get a surprise. When Joe went with the Kelly boys, there were plenty to point the finger. Not many now. Not with all these men taken from their families and locked away. The police bothering poor innocent folk. Here, show us your foot. Hmm, near enough. Joe's foot was always smaller than yours. Aaron. Why haven't the police touched you? Ah, uh, the police. The left hand doesn't know what their right hand's doing, so why would they think of me? Anyway, it's a well-known fact around Beechworth what a sober and influencer was on Joe. Why, you Protestant bloodstock! <laughs> Never did I! <laughs> oh, you making game of me, you devil of a boy. <laughs> this place about, and there could be anywhere. Now, you've got to get out of here, straight away. Anna. Straight away! Get out the back the way you should have come along the old mining race. You've got to tell me when you're coming so as I can make sure everything's clear. Now, get out! Thanks, Anna. 
Thanks, mate. Where is he? Who? Well, that man that went into the house. Oh, he's gone. That's just a bloke called Scotty. He lives up in the hills. He walked like Joe Byrne. Oh, did he now? Well, I can't say as I noticed. No one left that house. He's still in there. And I say he's not. Now, don't you go meddling. Search the other room. Under the bed, everywhere. There's no one there but children. Stay where you are, madam. You can help. Your son was here tonight. No, he never was. Then who? No one, I tell you, except Aaron Sherrod. It's like we're the first people have ever been here. Perhaps we are. First whites, anyway. If you dig around over there, I dare say you'll find old ashes. The blacks would have known about a place like this. Every cave, every spring, and all the ranges. So do you. I've learned it. But with them, it's like they know it before they've ever seen it. That kind of power. Somebody walked over me grave. Did your ma get that fencing done? She did. We had three men working on it. And Sergeant Steele riding past, looking daggers. He knew where the money came from. He said to her, I see you doing well for yourself, Mrs. Lloyd. And she said, no thanks to them, has knocked up my husband and son. <laughs> Ah, the Lloyds. What a vexatious family. And you're the worst of the lot. What have I done? You are obnobbing with a notorious scoundrel. A proclaimed outlaw. Yes, I am. Ah, Catherine Lloyd. What am I going to do with you? What am I going to do with you? What do you reckon? The 10 o'clock of the morning? The sun's right to flash a signal from the top of the ball hills up here to you and Beechworth. <laughs> and you'll never come and visit your ma without you signal me first. Right? No fear. <laughs> they still trust me, you know. Superintendent here has the whole police pursuit tied up in that little house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'd better get back. I don't want to be late on duty to hold their hands. <laughs> Keeping strain at the leash. I'm going to the Vine Hotel tonight. Well, uh, I'll spare a thought for you. And the beautiful Helen. <laughs> you wouldn't think the police would be so stupid. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Well, what do you mean by that, Tom? He means that Aaron's getting too damn thick with the police. Look, he's keeping them leg rope like a cow. And if he's making a quid out of it, why shouldn't he? He's your mate, Joe. And mine, Tom. He's a good man. It's barely the end of summer. How do you get through winter here? Ah, oh, you won't have to worry about that, Mr. Here. I'm certain sure tonight's the night our boy's coming home to roost. Good night, Mrs. Vandenberg. Good night, Helen. I got away as quick as I could.
Wouldn't this you recognize me? I couldn't tell. But we must know. Good day to you, Mrs. Bourne. I was just uh, a little chain. I thought Kate might have time for a stroll before tea. Kate has no time for you, Erin. Not today, nor ever. I told you, sir, Mrs. Bourne has no suspicion of me at all. All right, pack up the camp. But we just move around the hill. We'll go right on watching. No, Erin, I'm adamant I return to headquarters of Penella. What's your plan then, Mr. Here? To redouble our efforts. Resume an active pursuit. You'll wind up chasing your tails, just like you did before. No, not as before. This time I have in mind a more drastic measure. <laughs> This officer down from Queensland, O'Connor. He's got six native police with him, not just black trackers. They're fighting men. They keep the cannibals down on the Palmer River. Great horsemen, bushmen, good shots. And they can follow tracks at the gallop. Oh, they put on a show. Do you know one of them picked where a man had touched a slip rail? By the specks of salt from the sweat on the palm of his hand. I know what blacks can do. But we heard that one of them's sick already. Coming from the tropics, they can't take the cold. Ned, you should go up to the high country for a bit. They won't like it up there. No, let's just hold fire. We don't really know how the traps plan to use them, do we? If they got any sense, they'll give the blacks free reign. But would they do that? I could go into Benalla tonight, see if I can sniff out a bit more. And he was asking a lot of questions, you say? Acting like a friendly drunk. But he wasn't. Very nosy about the trackers. Here. Yeah, that's him. It's Tom Lloyd, one of Kelly's relatives. Is it? Well, now, why didn't you say so? I wouldn't have raised a finger. You're under arrest, Lloyd. On what charge? Assault and police. <sighs> and when you've done your time on that one, we'll have you up as a Kelly sympathizer. Well, you go for a row, boy -o. A cold wind blowing, and nothing but trooper police swarming like cockroaches. An old teacher of mine said that once. It was a time like this. Anyway, Kat, we've got to go away. How long for? I don't know. If I told you two weeks or two months, it'd make no odds. I may never come back, and that's what you've got to think of. I think of it. That's the way it is. What I'm trying to tell you, Somebody like me can't have any future. Nothing you can depend on. I mean, if this thing hadn't happened, I'd be paying court to you. Whispering together in the ash corner of your home. Us traveling together, like ordinary people. And all the hard work, waiting for the time when you're comfortable. A bit of fruit in a sideboard. The 
that can't be for us. Nadie, the future isn't hardly ever what you dream. It's what happens. Whatever it is, we can share it, can't we? Can't we? Catherine, if I could be certain of one day, I'd share it with you. But I can't even offer you that much. Tom Lloyd out of the way, Mrs. Maggie Skillion's the one to watch. See that bundle? She's taking supplies to the outlaws. I'd stake my reputation on it. In broad daylight? Just when we're going off duty. She's as smart as paint, that one. And the lads are after her. drag yourself away from that depressing map, we could stroll up to Craven's and have what passes in this town for a civilized lunch, eh? And a game of billiards. Well, sir, I must confess that. Mr. Hare, Captain Standish. Mr. O'Connor. I must protest, sir, at being ordered to return here while in active pursuit of the Kelly gang. Then discuss it with Mr. Hare. The order was yours, sir. Are you questioning it? I am forced to, sir. My native police and I have recovered a horse which was taken by the Kelly gang from the New South Wales police at Geraldery. Despite the encumbrance of eight Victoria police and five pack horses, which I did not want. Apparently, I must remind you that you are here to pursue the Kellys, not the glory of Queensland. After all, old chap, you have been sworn in as an officer of the Victoria police. This is a team effort, you know. For God's sake, here, my men were onto their tracks, fresh tracks. I advised you of this, sir, and yet you insisted we return. I did. I am bored with your wild goose chasers, which seem to stem from an obsession that you and your savages will win single-handed the £8,000 reward for the Kelly gang. That is unjust, sir. In your opinion, perhaps. But if you persist with this whore whore attitude of yours, we must endeavour to catch the Kellys without your valuable assistance. You may yet have to do that, sir. What an insufferable young man. Well, Herr, lunch? I hope we can resolve this unpleasantness, sir. Mm, he may see reason. What is that confounded racket? 
Yes, Constable. You ordered a bottle of Eau de Suez. Mouthwash, sir. Oh, thank you, Constable. What's the noise outside? Uh, the Kelly sympathises, sir. That they've been let out of jail. Oh, what happened? Well, the magistrate, sir. He wouldn't remand them one week more. That'll be all. Sir. Not our brightest hour. Uh, no, sir. But uh, perhaps this is what we need, sir. A challenge. No, Herr, believe me, we don't. Rely on me, sir. Let me embark on a period of relentless pursuit. The Kellys and their kind will have no rest, day or night, rain or shine, regardless of cost. Let me hound them. <laughs> Chap, this is most distressing. For me too, sir. But the hardships of active pursuit, living out in the bush, affected my constitution. I must ask you to relieve me from duty, sir. I shall have to eat humble pie and bring Nicholson back. Dreadful man. I couldn't be more sorry, sir. Not another word. We shall quit this place together. Without you here, even the chief secretary cannot keep me in Benalla. Oh, take heart. A few evenings at the club will soon be back to par. We shall... Yes, Ward. You'll pardon me, sir, but it's an urgent matter for Mr. Hare. Aaron Sherritt's got himself into trouble. There's a warrant for horse stealing out against him. God, what a mess. You don't concern yourself. They get the charges dropped. You take care of it. Refer it to Mr. Nicholson when he gets here. Yes, sir. For all I care, Sherritt can stew in his own juice. You give him a message? Ah, and a nip of brandy you left me. <laughs> I hear there's a warrant on you for horse stealing. Hey, well, that's cranky old Mrs. Burnham. She's really got a set on me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe told her what happened, but... Uh... So now the traps are after you, just like us. Hey, <laughs> only they're not going to quite so much trouble. <laughs> Why don't you come and join us? Why don't I? Eight months ago, I, when the trouble started, I, I would have given me right arm. I'd have left everything to go with you. But it's what you said then. I never pulled the trigger on them traps of Stringy Bar Creek. It was their blood tied the four of you together. I've had to stand apart on my own. But I've kept the traps off you. <laughs> made fools of them. <laughs> Even made money from them. <laughs> Oh, I've enjoyed it, too. And I'm still my own man. I think I understand. Well, I'm not always sure that I do. Take care of yourself, Boyle. It's a fearful, narrow path you're treading.
command of the Kelly pursuit. I wish to make it clear that the strength of the district has been substantially weakened. We have lost 52 constables and 23 soldiers, as well as Superintendent Hare and the Chief Commissioner. <laughs> In addition, the monies allocated to the pursuit have been drastically reduced. This will mean an end to the popular game of hare and hound, <laughs> which has been played in recent months on double pay. I look to your support, gentlemen. Sergeant. Parade. At hand. Shot. Dismiss. Did I go too far, Sergeant? I wouldn't say that, sir. If my words seemed intemperate, they can scarcely convey the fury I feel at Stanis's blatant attempts to cripple my efforts. I believe, Sadler, that anger is my greatest vice, but my greatest virtue is patience. That will win me the prize. We've been thinking it over, Tom. That idea of getting out of the country. Could be worth a try. All right, if that's what you want. But? Well, things have changed. The police have pulled their horns in. A lot. They're staying around the towns. What are they up to? Nicholson's back. He's trying to get every man and his brother to sign up as spies. <laughs> Is that the best they could do? They have made one little innovation. No man named by the police as a friend of the Kellys can take up land in the district. They couldn't do that. They've done it. I have the honor to inform you that your application for land has been refused on the recommendation of the police department. Others have got them. Seems the police gave the lands department a blacklist. None of us can take up a farm unless we go away somewhere else, away from the land we know and our families. So we've come to this. It's out in the open. The law has always been on the side of grand squatters like Witty, trying to break the back of little farmers. Now we're being used as an excuse to drive people out of the district altogether. How's it be getting scared? And with good reason. Without land, a farmer man's got no future. He gives up, he gets out, or he fights back. Now, every man on that blacklist and all is kin there with you, Ned. And whatever you do. Sack anyone? Well, they sacked me. Uh, well, well, what's your name? Bill Barry. How do you do? I'm Aaron Shetter. You're never. I am. The friend of the Kelly gang? Well, isn't everyone around here? You know what I mean. You're really thick with them, aren't you? What are they like? Uh, whereabouts do you live? Near the Woolshed School. Well, I tell you what, why don't I give you a ride home and then you can ask me all the questions you like. Mm, you're a fine strapping girl now, aren't you? Get on with you. My ma told me you'd been in all sorts of trouble with Joe Byrne and Ned Kelly. She said it was a miracle you weren't one of the gang. You must have a very exciting life. I hear it everywhere I go. Aaron's working with the traps again. We know that, Tom. He told us. Sure he did. And wouldn't that be a smart way to cover himself? The way things are shaping, a man's got to know what side he's on, then stick to it. I'm 
going to see Helen. Joe, I don't think that's a good idea. Too many police around Beechworth. She's expecting me. She'll be waiting. All right. But take my mare. You're too easy to recognize in that gray of yours. I'll be seeing you. Joe's getting pretty touchy. We all are. No wonder. We can't go backwards, can we? Can't sit still much longer. If we dare think of a future at all, we've got to do something that'll change it. I tell you, sir, the Kelly Gang is back in the heart of my district, right here, somewhere near the Greater Swamps. I say we should set fire to the swamps, burn out the entire area and force them from their cover. They have also been reported in Melbourne, South Australia, and on board ship to California. Do we set fire to them too? Sergeant Steele, I recall your vow to bring down Ned Kelly, but we mustn't be impetuous. I have a net of spies around the entire Kelly country. I noticed Sherritt waiting to see you. If your spies are of his caliber, I fear, sir, your net will fail you. Thank you for your views, Sergeant. Would you send in, Sherritt? Yes, sir. Take my word, sir. The net will not fail you if given the right bait. Nicholson. Ah, sit down, Sherritt. I wish to re-establish a police watch party on Mrs. Burns' house. Are you prepared to work with us again? It will be worth seven shillings a day to you, possibly more. What do you say? Could you give me a week's pay now, in advance? Of course. Could I have a few days off, say, uh, just after Christmas? Aye, that can be arranged. And no one watching the Bowen house while I'm away. Why? Because that's the way I want it. Very well. This time off and the money in advance, what's it all about? I'm gonna get married. It's not much of a place, but it's better than living with your mother. I suppose it is. How much room do we need, Mr. Sheriff? All at once is a woman's touch. I despair of the man. He's taken a house little more than a mile from Mrs. Burns, but it's right on the main road. Almost impossible for us to make use of it. If we had a police party in there by day, the whole neighborhood would know about it. Exactly. Well then, when the time is right, I think we should do exactly that, sir. Ned, I don't know what this idea is you're putting together, but whatever it is, promise us one thing. You won't tell Aaron about it. Nobody knows Aaron better than Joe. Joe trusts him. Then Joe's a fool. A man could believe that. Going off to meet his girl and a grey man could put a mile off if I'd let him, but it wasn't up to him. And trusting Aaron isn't up to him, not in the end. It's me, Tom. I'm the one who has to decide everything. If it's safe to light a fire, if we ask one of our mates to buy a box of bullets for us, or if we sit here waiting while our friends are hounded and haunted from the land they've Always known. Or if we arm ourselves for battle and ride out of here to face our enemies. Would that be madness, Tom? No. Then Aaron Sherritt and every man will have to decide whether he stands by us or with them. 
You're talking about a fight. Another fight. We always knew it had come to this, didn't we? We've tried to get justice, to live our own lives, even to leave the country. But the thought's always there at the back of your mind, like reaching into your swag, touching a gun. We've come to it, Tom. Not just another fight. It's got to be war. I took my trackers to some farms where some mole boards have been stolen. We found several tracks very... What, Mr. O'Connor, are mold boards? Mold boards, sir, are the curved iron plates of a plough which uh, turn the furrow. Go on. Near one of the ploughs, we found boot marks with larrikin heels identical to those worn by Joe Byrne. Hmm. Don't you see, sir? The Kelly gang stole those mole boards. Mr. O'Connor, at this very moment, our esteemed commissioner is campaigning energetically to have me removed from leadership of the Kelly pursuit. And very likely, you and your trackers as well. Now, I cannot concern myself with such trivia. Apart from which, I have to ask, what in the name of fortune would the Kelly gang want with curved plates of iron? What does it mean? The armor means we can come out in the open. The first thing the police will do is send a train against us. One way or another, we'll stop them. In armor, we're bulletproof at 10 yards, so we don't need long-range weapons. The best guns can go to our friends. You're to hide these away till it's time. And on the chosen day, we'll get word to watch for a signal. We thank you. There will be a proud sign. We're going to make the powers of B jump up off their shiny backsides and pay heed to our demands. If we can take the police chiefs alive, we'll use them as hostages for the release of our people and the blacklist. And get a better deal for every poor man in the Northeast. That's rebellion. The very word, and high time. Those wars in South Africa are nothing more than farmers like us. But they won't put up with... Queen Victoria running their country much longer. They'll call us a pack of Irish rebels. We are. But with us, we've got English, Germans, Scots, Chinese. Brotherhood weary of law without justice. <laughs> It 
it's treason, you know, Ned. Not if we win it, is it? Glance through Mr. Nicholson's legacy of clandestine intelligence before moving to my hotel. <sighs> sir, things have been quiet, Mr. Ward. Too quiet for my comfort, sir. Yeah, I can always rely on you for a good cliche, Ward. Oh. Thank you, sir. I cannot stress the urgency in resolving this business. The political pressure on Captain Standish is becoming intolerable. And the very future of the force. It's. What on earth is this twaddle? Missing portions of cultivators described as jackets are now being worked and fit splendidly. Tested previous to using and proof at ten yards. Uh, that is the report of a secret agent. He poses as a stock inspector. He claims the Kelly gang are making their own suits of armor. <laughs> Melodramatic spy nonsense. Bring him here and I'll sack him. Unlike Mr. Nicholson, I'll not waste my money in idiots peddling poppycock. No, sir. I still believe Aaron Sherritt's our best hope of getting the Kelly gang out into the open. In fact, I have taken rather a daring measure. I have installed a party of police constables in Aaron Sherritt's hut. As you can imagine, sir, it's very difficult to keep a thing like that a secret. Billy Bill, it's time for breakfast. I couldn't come at breakfast this morning. You all right? I'm fine. It's just my condition. Will you come out when you're ready? I'll go and get the file in. when you get that thing going. Oh, come on, Alexander. It's hardly even winter yet. I don't know how you'd do it. Out in the bush all night, long-distance shirt sleeves. And it's always a white shirt, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Why not? Bell will be out soon. You can all go in and bed down. When I wake up this afternoon, uh, what say you and I go up to Beechworth for a jar or two? All right. I'll be in that. I know he's got the police living in his house. My own brothers have told me. For God's sake, Joe! I want him to go easy. It's getting out of hand, mate. He knows what he's doing. Does he? I think so. I'm damn sure we don't. Shut up, Steve. Why in hell should I? Just because he's your precious mate. If we were a mate of mine selling us out, that would be different, wouldn't it? Cut it out, both of you! Come on, Steve. Let's get the blazes out of here. I know how you feel. All I can say is... I trust him with my life. Between you and me, it's Bob Alexander to Aaron Shelley. Now, this whole secret watch party business, it's, it's all a waste of time, isn't it? If there's something better to do, it is. No, I mean, you don't really want us to catch the cat again, do you? Well, you're on double pay. Do you? Hey, same again. It's nearly eight o'clock. We better get back home. Mr. Shannon, one more for the road, I'm thinking, eh? And 
what did he do? He turned around and he marched straight back out to the pub. And when I went after him, he was just standing there, shaking with rage. So then he blurts out that this girl sees Joe Byrne every Saturday night. Then he stormed off. Not another word. And what did you do? Went straight in and questioned her. <laughs> she wouldn't tell me anything. Of course not. But I fancy she'll have plenty to say to someone else. <laughs> head up to Beechworth on a special train that we'll be waiting for here at Glen Rowan. We break the line on the Big Ben and stop the train. And if they don't stop? They go over the edge to Kingdom Come. Then the rockets go up, our friends join us. It's moving. Tomorrow night. Thank you, Mrs. Sherrod. That was lovely. Bell told me you're turning Catholic. Ah, <laughs> uh, I suppose I've been nothing long enough. We're sort of for the baby. We're going to see the priest in the morning. Well, your mother will not be pleased about that, you know. It's Anton Vick. I lost my way. He must have been on the brandy again. Tony, you see that sap one over there? The one with... Who's that? sake, it's nearly morning. What are you? Go and get some help. 
But they could still be out there. Anyway, it's too late to help poor Aaron. I know. It's too late to help his baby. All right, Mrs. Barry, just calm yourself. We'll get word up to Beechworth as soon as it's light. <laughs> Daughter Jane and Miss Son, Jack. Jack. Miss Jones. Now off with you, Janey. And see to the porridge before it catches. Left about nine o'clock. They would have got word to Beechworth dawn this morning at the latest. That means the police train should be here early afternoon. For sure. Advice just received. Kelly Gang shot Aaron Sherritt. 7 p.m. last night. How can it take so long? You feel all right, mate? As soon as something happens, I will. You're much better looking than the picture I saw of you in the illustrated paper. Oh, I don't know. They just got hold of a portrait I got took a few years ago. Tried to make me look like a bush ranger. Who made you go in for it? Bush ranger? Well, hell, I was there. Same as these people are here now. The fella over there with the thick boat. Who's he? That's Mr. Curranow, the schoolmaster. He speaks. Mr. Kelly. I want you to know I'm with you, heart and soul. It's not everyone in this room is. The station master. He has a revolver hidden in the gatehouse. Thank you, Mr. Curnow. Steve! There's a revolver in the station master's house. And uh, see if Danny's picked up anything on that train. Where the hell is it? It's after 10 o'clock. I wonder if I might take my wife home. She's not strong, you know. You have no cause to fear me. I can see that. Go and harness your buggy. Ned, why are you letting him go? We might as well turn them all loose before too long. Go on, Mr. Carnot. And don't dream too loud. <laughs> Oh, 
small little block. How about playing us a tune we can all dance to, eh? I'll let you go in a minute. Uh, all except the good constable here. He'll wait till his friends arrive. Now, if any of you are present here tonight should tell the police about our doings just to... The train! Everyone? Lie on the floor. are in the hotel. Come on, lad. Let's have them. God, they're wrong. We've got to stop them. Don't hit around the back. Go on. Go on.
gunfire from the wrong side of the house. This is the meeting place, Ward, and we're not going to be... He's hurt. What are we to do, Ned? Nothing. You'll do nothing but ride away from here. You'll go back to your homes. Boys, they're fighting. It's all gone wrong. I'll not have you riding into the middle of that. I'm going back to get the boys away. You'll not follow me. The girls will have to know. You ride over there. And I'll look to Ned. Who's that? One grand police, Sergeant Seal. What's happening? They bailed up in the pub. Superintendent Hay has wounded his gone back to Bernal. No one covering the rest of this flank. Or around the back. They could get through. Reinforcements are on the way, Sergeant. Duh. You're not close enough here. Alas, it's those madmen out there. Look, get all the women and children together. Take that candle, hold it up, wave a white handkerchief, and call out that you're women. Tell the police to stop firing until daybreak. Lead the others out. Then we'll give them all the fight they want. Right. We didn't mean it to be like this. It was all just a great big game, wasn't it? before the shooting gets heavier. Women and children, come with me. Now, you take care. They're crazy out there. Crazy. Goodbye, Steve. Out the back way. Quick. Hook. Throw up your hands. Can I pull, I pull it through you? You can hear another train coming. More police. You give it a break, Joe. You'll get yourself killed. Why not? Isn't that what we always swore? The traps would never take us prisoner. Maybe it's time to play the piper. But I wrote me own words to the tune. Dead.
thought we'd lost you. Joe, he's dead. Or did I just dream it? Where are the boys? Oh my, oh my God, I, I told them to follow me. Did I fall asleep? You came back out of the pub. And we got this far and you fainted. Ned and you're half shot to pieces. Come on and we'll get some help for you. I've got to go back and bring the boys out. You can't. Nobody can. There's an army around that pub now. Thomas.
Ned, I'm Superintendent Sadler. Will you get the others to surrender? Sir, a number of the men... Uh, that is, there's a strong feeling we should rush the hotel. Sergeant Steele, for almost two years, I've been forced to sit by and watch my various superiors conducting the caliph's suit. Now it has fallen on me to end it, and it will be done my way, without risk of life or further shedding of blood. What is his condition, Doctor? I'm afraid he's going, sir. He has a remarkable constitution, but he shows no will to live. He looks like a wild horse brought in from the hills. Rest easy, Ned. He'll have what care we can give you. Peristum sanctum onceonum et suam puissimum, misericordiam indulgia tibi dominus quid quid deliquisti. Amen. Father, the two lads. They've let all the people out of the hotel. They're alone. Do you think a priest could persuade them to surrender? They'd take no notice. They're only boys with no one to follow. Would you get away from that window? They're not shooting anymore. They're just waiting. And more of them coming all the time, gawking and staring at the place. There's even a fella out there taking photographs. It's queer, isn't it? Us being the last. Even our horses are dead. God, I'd hate to die alone. That's the end of it. The whole wretched business is over. God alone knows what they hoped to achieve. Capital, my dear chap, capital. Thank you, sir. What of Kelly? The doctor now thinks he may survive, sir. We're about to put him onto a train with the body of Joseph Byrne. And the other two? The remains are charred beyond recognition. I allowed the families to carry them away. I beg you, sir, accept my judgment. I believe those unfortunate people have suffered enough.
I'm concerned, Sir Edmund, that the adjournment of the Kelly trial may impinge on the Melbourne Cup racing carnival. The execution, unpleasantness, not to mention the problems of further sensationalism and its effect on the lower order. The government will pay only seven guineas a day for Kelly's defence. So the uh, penny-plain young barrister they've engaged shouldn't cause the Crown any great delay. <laughs> Thomas Newman McIntyre. I saw the prisoner move his gun into line with Lonigan, who had no time to get under cover or to draw his revolver. The prisoner then fired. I saw by a glance that the shot had taken its effect. Robert Scott. I knew Lonigan and I asked Kelly who shot him. He said that he did. John William Talton. The impression that's left on my mind now is that he said he did all the shooting himself. Dan Kelly was present but took no part. It struck me that he wished to take all the blame on himself. Arthur Loftus, Mole Steel. The prisoner admitted he shot the police. He said, oh, that's all right. If I hadn't shot them, they would have shot me. Henry Richards, Edward Richard Living, Michael Edward Ward, Henry Dudley, Robert McDougall. Edward Kelly, the verdict pronounced by the jury is one which you must have fully expected. Yes, under the circumstances, but I do not fear death. I fear it as little as to drink a cup of tea. It is painful in the extreme to perform the duty which I must now discharge. I do not think I can say anything which would alleviate the pain you must be suffering. No. I declare before you, God and man, that my mind is easy and clear as any man in this world. It is blasphemous of you to say so. The day will come when we shall face a bigger court than this. Then we'll see who's right and who's wrong. Your crime is of an enormity beyond all proportion. A party of men taking up arms against society. That is the way the evidence brought it out? Regrettably, there is a class that looks upon the criminal as a hero. It would be as well for them to see that the unfortunate termination of your life is a miserable death. That is the life of the felon or outlaw. Outlaw! I have now to pronounce your sentence. You will be taken from here to the place whence you came, and thence on a day appointed by the Executive Council to a place of execution, and there you will be hanged by the neck until you be dead. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. I will see you there where I go. Father. Ned. Don't build up your hopes, Ned. The law, it seems, will not be deflected from its course. So is tomorrow at 10 o'clock, then? You know, signatures are still rolling in to petition your reprieve. Near 60,000, and many more see you as no common criminal. I remember the advice you gave me all those years ago, Father. I'm sorry to have disappointed you. It breaks me hard to see you come to this, but you're no disappointment. Well, time is short. Your relatives are to be allowed to see you. They're to come in one by one. I'll stay near at hand, should you need me. Muggy. Ned, we tried. We tried all these months. Shh. How's the children? We're fierce proud of you, boy. Jim. They let Mar out soon. You look after her. I could turn on 
my knees to the governor to peck on him. If you tell your grandchildren you met the Marcus of Normandy, they say, who is he, Granny? Tom, you know the head of the Rose River? Line up the hill in front of you and the rocks to the east. Near the cattle crossing, you'll find a hollow stump. There's a good saddle in it. <laughs> Catherine, for the first time I know what the future holds, but it's nothing I can share with you. There's nothing I can even give you, except this. You die like a Kelly, son. As bravely as you've lived. Asperges me, Domine, is so puet mundabor. Lavabis me, et supernivem de albabor. Miserere me, Deus, secundum magnum misericordiam tuam. Present your warrant.
Berges me domine is so puet mundabur, lavabis me et supernivem de albabur. Miserere me deus secundum magnum misericordiam tuam. Present your warrant. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison. Sancta Maria, ora pro nobis. Sancta Abel, ora pro nobis. Sancta Abraham, ora pro nobis. Sancta Andrea, ora pro nobis, Sancta Ioannis, ora pro nobis, Sancta Stefan, ora pro nobis, Sancta Laurenti, ora pro nobis, Sancta Zilla. Ah, well. Ora pro nobis, Sancta Gregor. I suppose it's come to this. Ora pro nobis, Sancta Augusti, ora pro nobis, Sancta Benedicte. teach the public that men are made mad by bad treatment, and if the police are taught that they may exasperate to madness men they persecute and ill-treat, my life will not be entirely thrown away. Mm -hmm. 